Hi, today I am going to do part two in a series where I tell you how I've adjusted my makeup application techniques to help me look younger as I've gotten older. Today we're focusing in on contour, blush, and highlight. If that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around. We're about to get right into it. So I'm Mona, I'm 51. I love all things beauty, skincare, and lifestyle. I love sharing anything that I've learned with you. I'm just your everyday average woman. I'm not a makeup artist, I'm a makeup enthusiast. And I like to say that I'm not a 10, but I like to clean up well. And I think that age is just a number. We can all age well, be grateful for aging. I don't mind aging. I don't mind the fact that my face is changing, but I just want to adjust what I do to put my face in the most flattering light that I can so I feel confident and I feel good when I go out. I'm not trying to look young again. I'm just trying to look the best I can at 51. So if that's you, consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. I'd love to have you. I'd taken a little hiatus because I was recovering for, from Hurricane Ida and now you can expect to see a video from me once a week, hopefully on Sundays, every now and then I'll throw in a spare. I'm actually filming today in the Midwest, in Illinois. This is my first trip away from home since Hurricane Ida, and it's doing me good to be in this beautiful country uh, filled with nature, beautiful scenes. I have a separate video I'm doing a sort of vlog style that you might be interested in that I'll throw up just as lanyap later on during the week. But today we're going to talk about blush, highlighter, and bronzer. I didn't realize that the way that I was applying those shouldn't be the same as I was applying them before. So my face has naturally lost collagen, it's lost plumpness, things gravity has just started to take its toll. I do believe that age is just a number, that we should age gratefully, that we should be thankful to be able to age because it's not something that everyone gets to do, and that it's not all about looking perfect or looking beautiful or looking just so, at least not in my world. I'm just your everyday girl and feel confident about myself. And what I was doing was just believing that more is more, right, because I am fair skinned and light and Besides the natural redness that I get from erythema of the skin, which is a natural condition I have that makes my skin sort of red. Besides that, I'm pale. And so I always wanted to layer on that blush. And contouring is good, especially as I've gotten older because I want to create some definition. But I don't want to do it wrong. I don't want to do it in a way that makes me look older. I'm not trying to look 20 years younger but I want to look my best and I don't want to look worse or older than I am. So let's, let's talk about contour first. So with contour, you're not talking about bronzing. Bronzing is made to warm up the skin, to add some color where the sun would naturally hit. Contour is about playing with lights and shadows and it's about sinking in what you don't want to bring attention to and highlighting what you do. So, or, or, Fading back, which you want to fade back, and bringing forward with light things that you want to bring forward. Maybe that's a better way to say it. So I have two bronzers with me. I packed light because I was going on a trip. I brought my Charlotte Tilbury Powder Bronzer, and I have it in the color too. I want a neutral color. I don't want it to be too warm. I actually want it to be a little on the cooler side. Grayish, topish, more than a sun-kissed brown. I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. This is the easiest contour that I've ever used. I think if you're a beginner that this is perfect. It's a little messy around the applicator. So we're going to do both sides. What I used to do is just kind of put it on and I would think kind of here. But that's too low and it drags my face down. What I want to do is I want to find that cheekbone goes up to here and I want to put it right beneath there. I also don't want it to be any bigger than about a finger and a half. 
I don't want it to be wide. I don't want this big old thick chunk of contour. I want a thin line. So one of my favorite tools to use for contour is this Artiste brush. And they have copies on the market. They have substitution or alternatives that are not quite as expensive. There are other small brushes. Any small brush, I like this one because of the size. This is the perfect size that I want my contour. And then of course I want to blend. I'm going to use this. And I'm going to take a little bit of this contour, put it on the brush, find that foam, And I don't want to come too far in. I don't want to come too far in with my blush, my highlight, or my contour. I would say that you want to go one or two shades above your natural skin tone. I also want to apply it right here. This is a little bit of area of sagging. And I kind of want to decrease the attention to that. Then I'm going to take my favorite brush soft, fluffy, and able to blend. But I want to blend up, not blend down. I don't want anything extreme. I don't want anything harsh. At my age, I want everything to be natural. Now let's try the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer on the other side. This is a little bit darker, and it'll give us a more serious contour look. I have the shade light medium. And I actually put a little too much, but that's okay because I'm not going to use it all. I'm going to take it with my finger. I'm going to find that bone. Where that bone ends is right here. I'm going to apply it just like so. And then I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to tap it in just where I want it. You can see how thick I want that line. And then again, I'm going to bring it up. To me, this is a perfect contour. I prefer it to the powder. I know this is popular and a lot of people like it. I think this shade is still even a 2 for me is a little light. Whereas this one looks dark. It actually works very well. I'm take this brush and I'm going to blend it. You can see that it gives a little bit of definition. Also, take a little bit. I'm going to put it on that little saggy jaw area. You can see it's improved on this side from this side because this this is more of the correct shade. I can also take this and I can contour my nose, make it a little bit more narrow in appearance. I have a wide nose given to me by my grandmother and my father. You want to take that all the way up underneath your eyebrow. And you can use the amount of product that you want to create the shape or illusion of the shape that you want. I'm going to take my favorite Stands Out Beauty Sponge and I'm just going to dot that because it's a little bit dark. Now we're going to talk about blush. I think as we get older that it's important not to have a completely matte blush. I don't want too much shimmer, I don't want too much sparkle, but I also don't want it just to be completely matte because I feel like that's dull and it dulls my skin and it doesn't add life. I want to add life. I want to bring out these cheekbones. So we said that when you darken something, you kind of cause it to recede in vision. When you highlight it, you cause it to come forward. I don't want to completely highlight because I have texture, but I do want something bright and, and shimmery or satiny, not completely flat. So I think the Charlotte Tilbury blushes are perfect. 
I also like a cream blush, um, Milani. This cream blush is perfect. I love the Ilia Stick Blush. There are plenty that will work. Again, I like to use a smaller brush. This is the Refer 4. Another one that I like is the BK Beauty 108. You can see that these are smaller. They allow you to put on the application more precisely. I used to believe that more was more. And while I do like a darker shade of blush as a rule, I want to make sure that the placement is precise. If you bring that, that blush into here, it's going to aid you. If you bring that blush too low, it's going to aid you. You want to get your blush on that apple of your cheek and then kind of in this area right here. Just this little area if you pinched your cheek. You want to stick in that. You don't want to go too far up here. You don't want to go too low down here. Just right here. I'm going to use the BK Beauty Brush. Again, I don't want to go any further than this. And people always said smile so you can get it on the apples of your cheek. But what happens when you're our, our age and you smile? When you stop smiling, that skin comes down. I want to look at it straight on so I know where my placement is. I don't want to smile, put it there, and then when I lower my cheek, my blush falls down. Because then my face is just going to look older. I want to draw the eyes up. Again, I'm pinching it. I don't really pinch it every time, but that just helps guide me on where I want to put it. And I love a smaller brush because I can be more precise with my placement. And I can use this one to blend because there's no product on it. And I'm sort of blending my bronzer, my blush, and making sure there are no harsh lines. If you're wearing a powder or a finishing powder, you can use a little bit of that on your brush. Highlighter. I think highlighter has its place even on a mature woman. I like my highlighter. What I don't like is flecks of glitter or serious, serious sparkle. I really like the Rare Beauty. This is a perfect highlighter. I also like the highlighter by Lila B that comes in a little pan. I think that is a great one. The one by Merit is really one of my favorites. I just didn't bring it with me. I like something that has a gloss, that has a shine, a little bit of iridescence. Also the Flawless Filter by Charlotte Tilbury, just putting that a little bit also is perfect. There are so many to choose from. Lumi, Lumi Lotion over the counter, I think that might be by L'Oreal. There are plenty of drugstore options as well. So I'm going to squirt a little bit on my hand with my highlighter. I just want it to give me a lift on my face, give me a little sparkle when the sun hits it, but I don't want it anywhere that I have heavy texture or wrinkles. So I don't want to bring it out too far because I don't want it on these crow's feet because that's just going to accentuate my crow's feet. I don't want to bring it too far in. I don't want to get it on my crepey under eyes for sure. So very precise placement is important. I'm going to take my ring finger which has sort of the lightest touch and I'm just going to go and then all I'm going to do is tap it in. You can see the placement of this is very limited. I'm not going too far up. I'm not going too far down. I'm not going too far in and I'm not going too far out just right there on the center and I'm just going to tap it in until it's blended. And you can use a you can use a powder, you can use a cream, you can use any product that you want, drugstore, high end, anything that's not too glittery or sparkly. And you can use that too if you want to. But you're taking the chance of drawing attention to places that you don't want to draw attention to instead of just uplifting your face and giving yourself a natural glow. I also take a little tiny bit. And 
any place that you want to add a little bit of light. And I'm going to take one of my favorite sponges, which is the Koki sponge. These are $5 at Rite Aid, or you can get them online. This is just as good to me as the Beauty Blender and much more affordable. I'm just going to tap it. And that's it. That's how I've adjusted my blush, my contour, and my highlighter at my age. I still do get a little sheen when I turn my head, but it's not accentuating my crow's feet and it's not accentuating my creepy under eyes. So tell me in the comments if you have any techniques or tricks that you do to apply your makeup better because we can all learn from each other. I always say that the magic happens in the comments. I appreciate you taking some time to spend with me today and until I see you next time, go out and live like Mel.